Peace everyone, Unmaskart here. Welcome back to another oil painting live stream. Hope everyone is having a lovely week. As you can see, I am not working on a colored pencil project today. I won't be starting a new colored pencil project for some time, so I am just going to do an oil painting today. This will be the last stream for the week. I won't be streaming next week because I'll be uh, playing in my chess tournament. So, hope everyone is having a lovely day. I have to forgive me for a second. I forgot to forgot to bring up chat. <clears throat> hey there, John. Good to see you. One second. I always, I always forget this. I always forget to do the chat. All right. Everything's good. Got my reference photo. Got my uh, chat up in front of me. I am doing well. Um, I just... Uh, Just gonna try to finish this painting really quickly. I'm gonna probably not do the best painting that I've ever done, but I'm trying to get it finished within a reasonable amount of time because I will be heading to the gym in a few hours. So I'm using a larger brush than I normally do. Uh, I've been Pretty productive today so far. I decided um, I decided to get a app on my iPad, uh, a to-do list app, and I started it yesterday because I'm just trying to build more productive habits. I just feel like I've been slacking off and I don't like it. So um, I went ahead and started adding things to my to-do list, and it's been really good the past couple of days. I've gotten everything done that I want to get done. Um, I've been wanting to read more often, and I already read for a half hour today, which is my starting goal like a minimum of 30 minutes a day reading um, I want to practice or study chess at least for a half hour every day um, I did about 40 or 50 minutes uh, just studying puzzles doing puzzles I played a few games, but I had some really bad games, and I was, I guess I just really wasn't in the mood to play games. I did some chess puzzles, though, and I feel pretty good about that. Oh, you're also a John? All right, got, got two Johns in chat. Welcome, by the way. But yeah, just trying to stay productive has been my day so far. What about you? Uh by the way, you did a really nice job on the uh on the the rust video. It was it was quite funny. Yeah, it was it was really well done. Good good use of, you know, all the 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 memes and stuff, the sound effects and stuff. The the audio balance was really good throughout. 
So, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing but positive things to to say about it. It was funny. It was a it was a funny video too. So, genuinely made me laugh. And you seem to be quite good at sniping in that game. Yeah, it was uh, it was impressive. One of these days, I'll reinstall Rust. Um, I I got Rust a while ago, and I, I tried to play it on my laptop, but my laptop wasn't it wasn't strong enough to run the game even on the lowest settings. So I just gave up. I'm going to zoom in a little on my reference photo here. My life a tiny bit easier. Yeah, editing is is a very difficult thing to do. Just just think about how long it took me to edit my courses that are six hours long. The courses that I sell on my website are uh, six to seven. I think I think my longest one is like seven and a half hours or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But um, and then. If you recall the the peaceful pastel series that I did a couple years ago, um, I did what eight episodes I think. Uh, each of those are about forty minutes long. Uh, yeah, yeah, most people don't realize the, uh, the the time it takes to do editing and stuff until they try it themselves and they realize, okay, this this does take a little bit more time than than I initially thought. I mean, I, I remember I just spending like hours upon hours editing my videos before. Um, you know, it gets, a, it gets a lot easier once you've done it for some time and you, you get into a nice workflow. But to get into a nice workflow takes hours and hours of learning and everything. Yep, that's why I live stream. Yeah. Yeah, live streaming is just so much easier. No editing. Now, of course, the, the quality drops off a bit for that reason. You know, I I try to make the live streams as professional as I can, but there's a limitation but i finally got it i i finally got a setup that i'm i'm very proud of so oh hey there victor I think I'm going to switch, start putting in my light. I'm going to cheat a little.
I would say, John, the, the only thing really holding me back from getting into Rust is that I don't like to play FPS games on keyboard and mouse. I really don't like it. I've tried. Uh, I've tried before. I just, I really, really just can't stand it. I much prefer controller with first person. It just feels, it just feels better. I feel like the movement uh, feels more fluid when you have a controller. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. You you switch to controller, and the people with mouse and keyboard just destroy you. I mean, I get the advantage of keyboard and mouse. The aiming. Once you get good at the aiming, then you you will always outperform a controller. There's there's no denying that. Maybe maybe one of these days I'll get back into it. There's just there's just so many other things that I'm doing. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to even play the games that I really like. I haven't played Lost Ark or Diablo two in like a month. It's been it's been quite some time since I've actually even turned on my gaming PC. I haven't even turned it on. Because I've just been really trying to focus on chess, partially due to my tournament happening this weekend, but also because it's something that I that I want to dedicate regular time to. Because for the past couple of years, I, I haven't dedicated I haven't dedicated consistent time to it, which is why I feel like I've stagnated a lot. And I don't like that. I I I have gotten good at chess, but I I don't believe I've even come close to reaching my potential. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to see how far I can go. And it's just going to take a lot of time and effort. Yeah, I can imagine it's really competitive. I mean, it's it looks like an extremely fun game. I'm doing this like super extra sloppy right now. I'll just correct whatever I can once I get the paper covered a bit. I'm actually using the admixture instead of the 
the moderate light. I want to try to get the highlight to show up just a bit, a bit more. Have I seen Prey? Oh, no, I have not. I, I actually came across that title, but um, I didn't bother even checking it out because I just assumed it was a horror movie. And my wife doesn't like horror movies, so I don't bother watching them. I'm going to have to check that out, though, because that... That does sound interesting. I haven't seen... I mean, the only Predator movie that I ever really liked was the first one with Arnold Schwarzenegger in the jungle. That one was the only good one because it had a pretty... It had a super simple premise. It, it didn't try to create some crazy elaborate story like they continued to try to push on you in the later adaptations and remakes and stuff just just keep it simple they always do that they they always do that i mean that's a perfect example is um uh the new jurassic park movies they just try to make it more the 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 story more complex more convoluted uh, more mature of a story and it's like that's that's not what people are here for they just want to see dinosaurs eat people like that's about it oh, okay uh have a good day at work glad you're able to stop by and say hello It sounds like somebody's dog is in the hallway whining. Why are they torturing that poor animal? Oh, hey there, B. Good to see you. Well, that's that's refreshing. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely have to check that movie out. Uh, yesterday I was talking about how Udon was kind of grumpy on Saturday and he he hissed at me and then I got off topic 
because somebody asked what is udon um but uh, i thought it was i thought it was really strange that he was grumpy and then sunday i sunday i took him out and he was not grumpy um and i realized why he was grumpy is because he started shedding so he he was shedding and he was in full shed uh sunday evening and so that's i, I that's why he was grumpy on saturday because the shedding process is rather stressful for them so he was he was nice on Sunday though. He just probably didn't really want to be handled. So I only handled him for a little bit before I put him back in his enclosure. Uh no, you don't you don't help them shed. They um the the best thing you can do to help them shed is just make sure that the humidity in their enclosure is really good. And I always do that. I check his enclosure like 20 times a day. I'm I'm constantly making sure that he's he has the best um the best conditions to have healthy sheds. I always make sure that he has really good humidity and everything, so He's good. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have any problems at all with with his shed. Yeah, my wife uh my wife has held him plenty of times. He's not not scared of him anymore. She's she's good. Um I mean, I had that I, Aren't we friends on Facebook, Joan? I can't remember. I don't I don't use Facebook very often, but I thought we were friends on Facebook. Um I posted a picture of my wife. Uh we were watching a movie one night with udon and he was just you know he was just crawling and exploring everything and my wife was wearing a, a long sleeve shirt and he crawled up her sleeve uh like all the way up to like her elbow and then he realized he didn't want to go any further so he turned around and he was just poking his head out actually let me see if i can just grab that photo really quick Yeah, you're you're friends on. It's like the last photo. Like the one of the last photos that I got, but I'll just um grab it really quick. So uh, let's grab this one second. So, anyways, here is um, here's the picture. Um, like I said, my wife and I we were just sitting in bed watching a movie, and uh, Udon crawled up her sleeve and then he just he just hung out there yeah he just hung out with his little head watching watching the tv that's one of my favorite pictures of him because he's, he's just he's just too adorable
Even even my wife can't resist his adorable little face. Yeah, it just it just took my wife a little bit of time to warm up to him. You know, for obvious reasons, you know, she not she was never a snake person, so it just took it just took a little bit of time for her to realize that he's not he's not scary. He's just he's just cute. He's just cute. That's that's pretty much how it goes. I think that finishes off that. So now do I guess I'll hmm what value should I use here? Everything's so light on I guess I have no choice but to Moderate dark for pretty much everything here. Yeah. I'll just use the moderate dark for all of the shadows here. I'll use a little bit of the add mixture to separate the cylinder from its cast shadow. But the only the only really, really dark thing in my reference photo is the night. The night is the only thing that has the extreme dark. I switched up I switched up my my shadow box a little bit so that the um the surface isn't black. I used white white paper. And because I used white paper, everything is just significantly brighter in the reference photo. So the table surface, I think I, I have to use the extreme light for the table surface. And for the objects, I'll use the moderate light. That's just the way that I could, it sort of turned out when I took the photo. Uh, no, he's he's not. I I mean, yes, he is cold blooded, but uh, he's not room temperature because uh, he wouldn't like that. It's too cold for him. Uh, he needs it to be like 30 degrees. So I have I have a, a heat mat that is attached to the bottom part of his enclosure that constantly heats. And I have a thermometer attached to it so that it turns on and off when it needs to in order to maintain the proper heat. And then during the day, I use a, a UVA lamp uh, that uh, heats ambiently inside his enclosure and also 
gives him the option to bake a little bit in the sun if he wants because it it's it's like an artificial sun uvb uva lamp so he doesn't do it though he doesn't he doesn't really use his lamp in that in that way he more or less uh always just sleeps during the day but the lamp is good for the ambient uh heat so i use it and I have that set on an eight hour timer. So he gets eight hours of sunlight every day. He does use it every once in a while. He'll crawl out and switch from one cave to the other and get some water or something. But for the most part, he just, he's just sleeping. Especially now when he's shedding, he, he never comes out, not even at night. He can't, his eyes are all gloss over and he can't see very well. So he, you know, they feel extra vulnerable when they're shedding, which is why they don't like to be handled and why I imagine he was a little grumpy on Saturday, but he got over it pretty, pretty well. Okay, yeah, take care. How's everybody else doing, by the way? Oh, hey there, Diane. I didn't even see you pop in. Uh, the weather here today is really, really nice. I sat out on my balcony and read for, for, I don't know, about 40 minutes to an hour or so. Perfect, perfect weather to sit out on the balcony and do some reading. Your daughter comes back today, doesn't she, Diane? Or is she just leaving? Is she flying out today? Is that what it is? I imagine it's going to take about 40 hours of travel from South Korea. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, it'd be nice to finish such a large project. How many how many hours does that take? About 200 and 260 rows. What's that? What's that take?
Oh, not until the 26th. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, 15 hours? That's nice. Yeah, I'm so used to flying from Europe to Ohio. And um, I'm lucky to get under 34 hours of travel time uh, at, when I'm returning. When, I, when I'm returning uh, to Poland, it's usually about 25-ish hours. But anytime I'm flying back to the United States, it's always like 35 hours or something crazy. Never, there's never a direct flight. Not from Poland, anyway. If I'm lucky, I can get a direct flight from Germany. But I don't recall the last time that was the case. Maybe if I flew out of, if I flew out of Warsaw, I'd probably have a little bit better luck getting a somewhat direct flight. Because I almost always, I almost always have three flights. So I fly, um, I fly from Poland to Germany almost all the time. But that's when Lufthansa wasn't having a breakdown because <laughs> Luthanza's Luthans is not doing too well right now with all the strikes uh, so I won't be flying through Germany this time actually I'll be flying through Finland um, which I've never done before so new experience but um, I I would fly from from here to Germany and then from Germany either to New York or Illinois, or Canada. Yeah, a couple times through Canada, actually. Uh, through Calgary, I think. No, it can't be Calgary. Could it? It might have been, actually. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever gone through Toronto, so I don't think that's it. I think it was Calgary. Like twice. I know for sure twice I've gone through Canada. And I think both times it was Calgary. Yeah, that's understandable. It can be can be stressful going through different airports because they're not it's not like they're all the same or anything but you you always got to find your way and some some airports are not very intuitive I know a couple times uh, there were some airports that I had to go like from a completely different terminal which required either a bus or an underground subway kind of thing or um, or just an underground passage that you have to walk so yeah it can be it can be overwhelming if you're not familiar with airports or flying Oh, hey there, Rain. Good to see you.
trying to get through this painting as quickly as I can. I think I got the hard parts done though, so at the very least. This is a pretty pretty simple painting in comparison to the last couple. But it's it's very different in the lighting because uh, I changed the background, so it's not uh, it's not black. The background's not black, which really affects the values that I use in the main subjects. Fifty hours is a long time for that. Yeah, that's some hardcore dedication. Uh, Udon is is behaving. Um, I get, you weren't here when I explained, um, but I, I mentioned yesterday that he he hit, uh, he hissed at me on Saturday night. He was a bit grumpy, uh, and I didn't know why he was grumpy until Saturday, uh, until Sunday night. Because Sunday night, I I took him out, and uh, I realized that he was in he was in full shed, so his eyes were all glossed over. He probably couldn't see very well, and so he just felt uncomfortable Saturday night, which is why he he hissed at me all grumpy like. But uh, yeah, he's he's good. He's he's just doing his shedding thing. I probably won't see him for a couple days. I'll check on them. Uh, I'll check on them Thursday. I was going to feed him. Uh, I intended on feeding him Thursday night so that he doesn't get hungry while I'm gone. But I'm not sure if he's going to want to eat or not. He's, you know, he's rather picky. Uh, I'm going to be driving. Yeah, it's going to be a, a nice little drive. It's about an hour and a half drive, so it's it's really nice. Yeah, it's not a long drive at all. So I'm um both my wife and I are looking forward to it. It will be nice to have a car because the one restaurant that we went to pretty much every day that we were there closed. And there's a neighboring city that's about 20 minutes away that has a restaurant that we want to go to and try. So probably the first night we may go to that restaurant, see how it is, and we'll probably go there uh, one or two more times beyond that. So a few times in the next 10 days.
I've gotten a lot more used to driving recently. It's sort of all coming back to me now. And I'm getting I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the the streets and stuff, at least where I am locally. So it's not it's not as it's not as bad as it was when I first got the car. It's a little bit uh it's quite a bit easier now, so I just need to try to get my wife to stop telling me what to do while driving. <laughs> I don't know how successful I'll be at that, but she has um she has a really bad tendency of telling me how to drive. Mostly when it comes to uh following traffic cuz I keep I keep telling her that uh, I'm I'm not going to go slower than traffic even if traffic is going slightly above the speed limit and there's a lot of there's a lot of leftover speed limit signs from construction that who knows how long it's been that the construction has been finished but there's constantly contradictory speed limit signs where there was previously construction and they just seem to not remove the the unnecessary speed limit signs and so sometimes it, it, the speed limit will just drop for absolutely no reason whatsoever because there was previously construction there and so they put up the the signs and then they never removed them and <clears throat> it's just uh, slightly annoying to be told to slow down when it's not necessary all the time. Uh, I contaminated that paint a little bit too much. Maybe I should just clean my brush out. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, my wife can't drive. She doesn't have a driver's license. She's never driven. Uh, the closest that she's ever driven in her entire life is actually when we drove across the United States. So when I was first moving here to Poland, um, and we drove across the United States in the moving truck. When we got to Indiana, there was, um, I, had, I had missed the, I, I guess it was sort of like a, a junction, sort of, because it, it went from an interstate to another interstate, but it was sort of ambiguous, and it wasn't, and so we missed it, and I got to this intersection where I was like, there's no way, this is the right way. We must have missed the, the the turn. And so I went to turn around and there was like gravel on the side of the road and I thought it was perfectly fine to just pull in there and then back out and you know do a three point turn. But as soon as I pulled in there, immediately stuck. Um but before I got before I even got out of the truck, which was pretty much immediately as I was stuck, um, two people had already stopped to help pull us out. Um and so it didn't last too long, but she she got in the driver's seat and she pushed on the gas going reverse a little bit um, before the truck, because we had just tried to push the truck while she pushed on the gas, but it wasn't going to work. And so um, the, the truck that I'd pulled up just pulled out a chain and pulled us out and she didn't have to do anything 
beyond that, but that's the closest she's ever gotten to driving is just pushing on the gas for a few seconds. She was super nervous about it, uh, obviously, because one, she doesn't have her license. She's in a foreign country and uh, it's this big old truck, so big old moving truck. Uh, we drive on the right side of the road. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's only like four or five countries in the world that drive on the left side. Um, you have the UK. J -j Japan? Japan? Um, Australia? And then there's like another one or two or something like that. I'm not sure. I, I, I know we had this conversation before. There's, there's a few obscure ones that do it for whatever reason. <clears throat> but there's not that many. Not in comparison to the ones that just drive on the, the right side of the road. Oh, hey there, Claire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Australia. I mean, they have right side drive cars. So Australia, Japan, UK, they all have right side drive cars. So the steering wheel's on the right side. So I'm pretty sure they drive on the left side of the road. Yeah, it does it does feel really nice to have a car. The other week I you know, I needed to get some things from the store. I need to get food for Udon and a couple things from the the home improvement store and if if I needed to if I needed to do that and I didn't have a car, which I've done it before, um, the Galleria that I have to go to round trip to get Udon food would be about three and a half hours. It would take me about three and a half hours. 
um, and then to go to the to the the Obi, the home the home store uh, would take about two hours round trip. Uh, why are the drop shadows the same value as your form shadow on the cylinder? The cast shadow isn't inherently darker than the form shadow. Uh, there, there's two things that influence. There, there's two things that influence the value of a shadow. The first thing is the intensity of the light. The second thing is the color or the, the value of the surface that the shadow is on. So in this reference photo here that I have, the value of the, the surface that these objects are sitting on is white. Um, the value of the cylinder and the sphere is also white. Uh, same thing with this. So all of the, all of the shadows are the same. The, the night is the only dark object, uh, which is why it is the only one that has the, the darkest value. Besides this little part of the rook. Uh, your understanding was that the drop shadows are zero and from form shadows one to two, is that correct? It, that is not the way you want to think about it. Uh, you have to measure the values based off of the reference itself. It's not that you, it's not that no matter what the reference photo looks like, all the cast shadows are inherently the darkest value. So you don't want you don't want to as, you don't want to assign cast shadows as just being the darkest value. Now for the monthly mastery, because I know what the reference photo looks like, the the cast shadows are the darkest value in the reference. So that is correct. The form shadows are going to be a variation of one and two values. There might be, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, but eventually there's going to be some, uh, some shadows that change in value because of the value of the object itself and the intensity of the light. So yeah, don't, don't set it in stone like that. Uh, you, want, you want to remain flexible with how you assign your values. Uh, how to consistently shade with a pencil. Uh, there's a lot of different shading techniques with pencils. You can use uh, you can use graphite powder. You can use just the pencil itself with a really light touch and multiple layers. You can blend with a Q-tip. You can blend with a tissue. You can blend with your finger, though I don't recommend blending with your finger. Don't blend with your finger because you have oils on your skin and you're smearing it all over the paper. Not a good idea. Um, you can use blending stumps to blend. There's, yeah, there's just, uh, there's a lot. I would recommend just practicing with, with any, with all the blending methods, just, just keep blending. Blend as much as you can and um, that's that's going to be your best path to getting better at those methods. There's almost no right or wrong way to to blend. It's just there's there's several techniques and it's to your best interest or to your best benefit to just learn them all, practice them all. Because in any given situation, 
different blending methods will give you different results, different effects, whether you're trying to create a specific texture or something like that. So it's just best to practice them all. Find the one that you like best also. Yeah, absolutely. If you have any other questions about the monthly masteries, don't hesitate to ask because I would what I would much rather people do them correctly the first time than to turn them in incorrectly. Because they are uh we're on monthly mastery eight now. Uh they're getting much more complex. There's a lot more shapes. The lighting is more complex because of the amount of shapes and people are messing up all of the values because they are not applying the same thought process that you learn on project or on monthly mastery one two three and four uh, and so they keep messing it up uh, perhaps they they're messing it up because they're sort of thinking it the way that you thought about it how you're assigning the cast shadows a specific value, but that's not the way that you want to look, of it, look at it. The measurement system for evaluating your values is first you identify what is the darkest value, the darkest shadow. Whatever the darkest shadow is, that shadow, no matter whether it's a form shadow or a cast shadow, that's your zero value. So it's, um, it's really important to understand that that is how you find your darkest value in the shadows, is you identify what the darkest value is. Now it's a little bit different. I wish I would have thought of this before taking all the reference photos for the monthly masteries. So I'll apologize now. The shadow box that I created, I used black surfaces, which makes it slightly confusing because the black surface uh, outside of the shadow is, is a light. It's being hit by the light. So you cannot use a shadow color just because it's a dark color. Because right now we're not, we're not trying to, we're, we're not replicating the reference photos. That's, that's the other, the other important process of this is that uh, right now you just need to practice measuring values and comparing them one to the other. And uh, I know that the table surface made that a little unclear, but um, hopefully I've clarified that enough. Uh, will I do a graphite picture for us? Uh, I've done some graphite drawing before. Uh, I don't do it very often because I don't like to do graphite. It's it's not as fun as color. Like color is just more fun, period. Um but I can I can do another graphite project sometime in the future. I'm I'm not a, I'm not against doing that at all. So uh, will I be posting the monthly mastery nine before I leave for the U.S.? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll make sure I do that. The monthly mastery nine. Uh, I really wanted to do monthly mastery nine with texture, so I'll probably have to make a video on it as well. But I don't know. I, I might actually skip it. I might skip texture for now. Since uh, it's the the monthly masteries are still giving people a bit of a problem because they are getting more difficult. 
Um, I might I might skip texture for now for monthly mastery nine, but monthly mastery nine is actually going to be um, one of the reference photos that I've painted here. It might actually be this one. I might I might just make this monthly mastery nine actually because I, I really like the shapes here. Um, but I don't know. I'm 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 I might change it up. We'll see. Oh, hey there, Kizzy. Been a while since I saw you. Yeah, so the, the best way to approach the monthly masteries. So say you're looking at the reference photo. What, what you know about the values that you can use is that you have six values. You only have six values, right? The first three, 0, 1, 2, those, those can only exist in the shadow, so where the light is being blocked in the image. The other three are the lights, and those three values can only be placed in the image where light is actually hitting the surface, because you only have those two options. You, you only have those two options in, in art. Either light is not hitting it or light is hitting it. There's no, there's no third option. Uh, it gets more complex when you start dealing with different lighting setups like multiple lights, two, three, four lights, or ambient light. It gets more complex, but that's not what we're, that's not what we're dealing with right now. First we, need to, first, we need to learn how to break down a single light which is what all the monthly masteries are. All of the monthly masteries have a single light source. And so it's practicing breaking up the image into the shapes that separate light from shadow. That's, that's all that it is. Once you identify the shapes that break up light from shadow, all you have to do is assign the correct value based off of what's darkest and what's lightest. So if you look at the shadows in the reference photo, say you're just looking at the shadows, whatever the darkest shadow is, that is automatically your zero value. Now when you take, now what you, what you want to do, what will make it easier actually, is if you identify the darkest shadow, and the lightest shadow. And so once you identify the darkest shadow, there's your zero value. And then once you identify the, the brightest shadow, which sort of sounds weird to say brightest shadow, but the lightest valued shadow, that's automatically your value number two. And then all you have to do for all the shadows in between the zero and two is, well, figure out which one you want to be one, because truthfully, there's a bit of flexibility there, but obviously the one value is in between zero and two, and give it that value. And all you're doing is you're taking the other values of the shadows and you're comparing it. So if the shadow is closer to the two value, then just give it the two value. You don't have to you don't have to complicate it beyond that. It's, it's not about matching the values perfect. That's not what we're learning in the monthly masteries. We're not learning to match the values perfectly because we're not trying to replicate the photo. What we're trying to do is replicate the light. That's what we're aiming for. And um, by using this, this system, you are going to establish the light within the scene. And that's the important thing to learn because that's the difficult thing to do as things progress. Once you add color, you can't be struggling with the, the value of, of the lights because as, as establishing the foundation, establishing the understanding of how to break up the images from shadows to lights, then when you, add, when you add color, you still have to do that process 
but now you're just adding a second degree of difficulty to it. And what happens is most people most people skip this. They don't they don't learn to break down the images into shadows and lights. And what they do instead is they just throw their colors at it and they try to match the colors the best that they can. The problem with that is unless you're somehow just inherently good at accurately gauging the value of colors, you're 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 just going to turn out a mess. It's just not going to look good. And you're the thing that you're going to be missing, you're not going to be able to capture the light. So that's that's why we're spending the entire this entire year with the monthly masteries just being uh, monochromatic because I I think it's important it is important it's not just that I think it it is important to understand and learn how to break down an image between the shadows and light and to do it counterintuitively the way that I describe in the monthly masteries by giving you six values you can only use those six values and to not copy the reference photo based off of what value you think something is, but instead measure it, measure, measure the values against themselves. So find the darkest shadow, there's the zero, find the lightest shadow, there's the two, and so forth. So how do you determine the value of reflections and highlights? Well, I described this. I described this, I think, in Monthly Mastery 5 when I introduced reflections and highlights. So, for instance, the, say we're doing this cylinder here for Monthly Mastery, and there's a reflection right along this side that brightens it a little bit. And say that I made this value here my, my 2 value. My two, my two shadow value is the left side of the cylinder. If there is a bright reflection reflecting off the side here, then the brightest I can use is the three. So whatever the, sh whatever the, the value is, you can go one up or one down. That's it. So if there's a highlight, if this is my, if the, the sphere here, the, the lighted part of the sphere is my three value, then the highlight, the most I can go is my four value. And that's it. So the, the highlight won't be extreme. The reflection won't be extreme. It's just that it's noticeable. That's all. That's all you need. Uh, where am I working? I think, yeah, I think I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna use the lightest value here for the table surface. Oh, I, I feel your pain, Kizzy. My my back has been acting up for going on like a week and a half now. Um, if if the internet is correct, I I am not having sciatic nerve problems. Um, because there's some there's some tests that you can perform to determine whether it's your sciatic nerve or something else but I, I don't know what the the how to describe the pain it feels like sciatic nerve or sciatica that's what I thought it was um, but 
I don't I don't know at this point. I'm not sure. But it hurts to it hurts to sit up. Like if I'm if I'm laying in bed, it hurts to just sit up. Um sometimes it just hurts if I'm standing. Like if I'm standing, I'll just have like kind of a a, a nodding pain in my lower left like right above my right above my hip bone and just to the left of my spine there would just be sort of like this not really a sharp pain it's sort of like a like somebody's poking you really hard with their finger kind of pain and apparently it should have numbness associated with it if it's sciatica uh, but I've had no no numbness. I haven't had any numbness, so I'm pretty confident to say that it's not sciatica, but uh, I have no idea what it could be. It's been going on for far too long. Have I had kidney stones? No. I can't imagine that I would ever have kidney stones. Kidney stones are caused by diet, almost exclusively. And there would be there would be other signs if there was kidney stones. There'd be other signs. There's just no way. I drink way too much water, I eat way too healthy. And I think I don't think kidney stones like I I don't know a lot about kidney stones because I never had them, but um I don't think the pain would fluctuate the way that it has the past week and a half. Yeah, that that's something that I thought about, Diane, because um, the what I would describe as like the the relief that I'm looking for. Uh, I had my my wife was my wife was rubbing my back last night and it felt a lot better like it it feels nice when she rubs that area which is um something that if it was a sciatic if it was sciatica then uh there's no way that she would be able to rub that area and it not hurt um so that was another sign that I was thinking that, okay, this, this can't be sciatica because when my wife rubs my back, it doesn't cause extra pain. And um, the what it feels like, what, the way that I described it to her is that it feels like almost that my my femur bone is higher than it should be. And so I had her like, pull on my leg a little bit um, to try to relieve the pressure, I guess. is And, and that's what, honestly, I, I told her that if, if she could rip my leg off, I feel like that would feel better because it, it sort of feels like my femur bone is just way too high up into my pelvis and it just feels like a pinch almost. Feels like a pinch. So I, I've been doing stretches and stuff to try to get rid of it, but it hasn't worked. Yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of stretches the past few days. 
I watched some some videos on YouTube and read some medical articles on some stretches to do. Um, they haven't really helped yet, but. I'm just trying to not let it affect my gym time. I've been I've been extra cautious at the gym to with my exercises like I don't want to do anything that would cause any extra pain or anything but every time I go to the gym I feel so much better my back stops hurting like I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm moving and I'm getting my body's like warmed up uh whether I use the elliptical or the stationary bike or whatnot, but it almost always immediately feels better after I've been at the gym for like 15, 20 minutes. It's been really difficult to lay comfortably uh, in bed when I go to sleep. That's probably the most annoying part, is that it's difficult to be comfortable in bed. Because if I lay on my back, it just feels like it's being pinched. And when I lay on my side, I feel like it's making it worse, even though there's no pain. Yeah, I'll have to um I'll have to look those up. I honestly I'd be surprised if I wasn't already doing those stretches. I'm gonna look that up right now, actually. Oh, hey there, Remy. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I've I've thought about maybe I overworked myself in the gym as well, but I, I just have a hard time believing that because I don't really feel like. I've done anything that put stress on that particular part of my body. Yeah, I've Yeah, I I see these stretches here, Diane. I've done I've done at least more than half for sure. Yeah. I like the um the child's pose. Uh the child's pose is one of the stretches that I do pretty much every day I wake up. Like that's pretty much the first thing I do every day <laughs> is the child's pose when I wake up. 
So yeah, I've been doing those stretches for a little while now. At least three days. Yeah, I don't know if I could do cow. I, I think the cow position would cause me quite a bit of pain. Oh, you send those videos on to me on Discord or what? Is that what you're talking about, Diane? I should log in Discord. Usually I have Discord open on my computer, but I shut it and then I forgot to open it. All right, yeah, I see. I see the messages. I think I actually watched that first video. The, that's where I got most of the stretches. The thumbnail looks familiar. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the background here because the standard is to use this one admixture for the background, but I'm kind of leaning away from doing it. Maybe I'll just do it anyway. Who cares? want to finish this painting. This lightest value is rather translucent. A, a lot more translucent than the other paints. Generally, I don't add a lot of extra oil to it before using it but even even that doesn't really help too much it's still quite translucent
I'm going to soften these cast shadows a bit. I guess we'll just start here. Wow, I'm surprised I got this much done in an hour and a half. Quite surprised. I think that's soft enough. Oh, we don't keep. Let's dribble some of this paint on here now.
hopefully I have enough um, of this and I don't have to mix more of it but it's going to be close I did not mix very much of this value up. Has anybody read the book Atomic Habits? I was thinking about buying it. Haven't heard of it. Yeah, it's um, it's just about like a a method of creating good habits, getting rid of bad ones. My friend Machek, he gave me, uh, he, he lent me this book called Mindset. And I started reading it yesterday. That's really good so far. And uh, essentially, it, the whole book is broken down into establishing or identifying two different mindsets, either a set mindset or a growth mindset. And I found it very interesting. It's a psychology book about the way people think and the effect it has on success, you know? I think I have a pretty decent growth mindset based off of the way the book makes me feel when I'm reading it. 
sort of just this idea of enjoying a challenge. You know, you like to be you like to be challenged, required to to learn things, to progress and whatnot. One review says the podcast was more interesting than the book. Yeah, I I like I like the book. Um, I I like reading books. So, someone that says the podcast better than the book might be a person that likes to listen more than read. But I've I've already implemented some of the things that they teach in the book. Cause I, I watched I, I actually I watched a review of the book. That's um that's how I came across it. I was just you know, down the YouTube rabbit hole, came across a review of the book and I was just curious as to what it was. Uh and it was a it was a good video, actually. It was a good video. And it talked about the sort of the methodology of creating good habits. Some, some ways to trick your brain into wanting to create good habits. And so... That's sort of what I... Have been trying to implement the past couple days, and I've seen some. It it seems to be kind of nice, like finding a bit more motivation to do things that I generally have zero motivation to do. One of the things that stuck out to me is sort of setting up a reward system for your new habits or uh, establishing a trigger to sort of get you doing the new habit and uh, I actually noticed that it worked for me last night because I made a to-do list and I wanted to get everything on my to-do list done before going to sleep. And I got almost all of it done except one thing. And it was like, what time was it? I think it was around 21. So it wasn't real late or anything. But my wife made tea and uh, I had set tea as a trigger for one of my new habits, which is reading more, because I used to read all the time, and for the past like year or so, I haven't read really anything at all. And so I wanted to get back into the the, the good routine of, of reading, and I set a trigger that when I make tea, I'm going to read for 30 minutes. And so my wife brought me tea and it immediately reminded me that I need to read because I didn't read. And so I sat there and I read for like 30 minutes. Started that book that I've been putting off for like a week and a half. I mean, I got a lot of other stuff done yesterday, too. Got to cross it off my to-do list. And then also today, I woke up 
when I woke up, I looked at my to-do list and I just marked one thing off after another and got everything done. Like I, I needed to take this reference photo. This was on my to-do list for today. And I, needed to study some chess and I needed to do some other stuff and manage to get it all done relatively easily. Yeah, I like the smell of books too. I I have to buy the book. Like I I don't like reading off of a screen and I don't like audio books. I've I've done a few audiobooks but I don't like them. I got to mix some more of this paint unfortunately. I don't even think I have enough Oh well. Try to get it filled in. I still need to blend the rook. I didn't even blend anything down here or highlight it or do anything. It's a mess. My rook is a mess. Yeah, yeah, my my reward system for my new morning routine is is to make my my protein smoothie because my protein smoothie is just so delicious. So I'm just using it as a reward even though I would drink it anyway. And uh it's working out pretty well. I just, I'm just making, I'm just making my morning routine cleaning. Like the, the, my least favorite thing to do in the whole wide world, so. I'm just gonna wake up and clean and then have my smoothie. And that's, that's my reward system that I have set up right now. I don't have a reward system for chess studying though. I've, gosh, the, the last few days, I, I feel like I've just been going by so quickly and I still have a lot of work that I need to do on my, on my studying material for chess. I just, <clears throat> It it takes a really long time. It's really hard to do. I did a lot of it last week, but didn't finish. Yeah, I always take reviews with a grain of salt as well. Um, my my standard of review is if the person sounds emotional, then I ignore it. I think Amazon has like the most comical reviews. There's always the one person that complains about shipping even though it has absolutely nothing to do with the product.
That sounds very tasty, Diane. Come on, background. Let's get filled in. I decided to tilt my desk. Uh, that's why I have this tape. It's a little bit better. I don't think it's as good. I think I need it to be like 45 degrees, 45 to 60 degree tilt for the light to not bother me. Because the light just reflects so much off the oil paint. It needs to be at a, a steep enough angle that the light doesn't shine in my eyes. Portable rolling drawing table. That sounds nice. Uh, let's see this. Let's use You need a drawing table you can move away from your cat. I feel like it'd be easier to move your cat than a drawing table. <laughs> That's funny though. You know, I this this table that I use is one of those really cheap like drafting tables that you would buy for a maybe a teenager like but realistically like a kid and i'm kind of surprised at how much i like it uh, the only thing that i would complain about is that it's too wobbly which forces me to have it up against the wall. So I have to have it up against the wall because otherwise it's just far too wobbly. And if it wasn't like that, if it wasn't wobbly like that, then I probably have my bedroom set up differently. Yeah, I, I may have it set up differently. I may actually have this turned that way or turned this way 
I might I, I would probably have it turned to that way. And then I have like this side up against the wall and then that wall behind. Uh, let's blend this out. I'm just going to soften some of these transitions on the rook and fix the edges a little bit and call it a day.
Maybe I'll add a little bit of a highlight to the rook. And add like a little bit of a highlight here. Up a little bit. Same thing here. All right, I am calling this done. So let's peel off the tape. It's not the prettiest painting in the world, but I have two more that I need to do to be done with block two. That's really all I'm trying to do at this point, is just get done with these paintings. For the 20th painting, I'll spend more time on the 20th painting. But for 18 and 19, I'm just trying to get done. How bad does that show? That, that shows up really bad. Let me just cover up that canvas a bit better, because that's, that's a little bit too obvious. That's good enough. zoom out Alrighty, there's the finished painting. All done. Why do you think it still looks good? Anyways, that is going to do it for today. Um, I'm not going to have any other live streams this week. Friday, I will leave for my tournament. So this will be the last time you see me before I return from my chess tournament. Um, I will play my best. I'll, I'll do my best. Try to try to bring home the gold for all of you. I, you know, I felt like I was in a really good position to win it last year. But it was my first tournament, and I, I did a lot of stuff wrong. You know, I, I got too complacent. I, I rushed. I didn't, I, I, I played too confidently. Uh, and I should have taken my time. The, the games that I took my time on, I won. The games that I didn't, I played terribly. So hopefully this year, I will play a little bit better for my tournament. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, and yeah, I will see you when I return. I don't actually know the exact date. I don't know the date. Um, it, I think it will be two weeks from now. So I think Monday...
Yeah, Monday, two weeks from now. That that should be it. Yeah. And we'll we'll finish off the pastel project when I return before I head out to America. But anyways, thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out. I really appreciate it. And uh I'll see you when I get back. All right. Take care.